Steelers Nation, welcome back to another live stream here on this Thursday afternoon. We are officially two weeks away, two weeks from today, two weeks from now. We will still patiently be waiting for the NFL draft, but two weeks from this time, we will be getting excited to see who the next Pittsburgh Steelers will be at pick 20, or could that be before pick 20 or after pick 20? We'll discuss it all. I want to welcome back a special guest to the channel, to the podcast. Shout out to our boy, Steel Sentinel. He joined us last time, right before all the craziness happened. And now we get to have him back on to discuss his opinions and his thoughts and his reactions regarding all the chaos. So nice, we had to clap with him twice. Sentinel, brother, how you doing, man? I'm doing good. I'm enjoying my day off today, doing one of the things I love most, which is talking about Steelers football, and uh, this is like the second time I've gotten to wear this Minka Fitzpatrick away <laughs> jersey. I'm very superstitious. I'm, I'm old-fashioned Italian that way, and yeah. I don't wear jerseys when the team is losing. So I started wearing this shirt starting beginning of the season against the Niners. We all know how that went, so I <laughs> yeah. did not wear this jersey the rest of the season. So hopefully <laughs> the same thing doesn't happen this year, but I'm doing good. Uh, the draft is like right around the corner. We're in that awkward like two week period before the draft where it's just like radio silence. Like nothing is coming in or out of Steelers HQ. So, you know, we're hearing a bunch of crazy ass reports. You know, I might just shut off my social media for two weeks until the draft is done because we're going to hear all kinds of crazy takes, hot takes yep. and stuff like that. But I'm glad to be back nonetheless. Yeah, we're going to hear all kinds of rumors and, and whatever the hell is going around social media now. What's the next hot topic? What's the hottest thing going around in regards to this team and that team, what they could do, who they're looking at, mm -hmm. what position they're going to draft. We're going to hear all about it. We, in fact, already are hearing all about it. So until then, it's all speculation. But today, man, we got a, a stacked show to talk about. We're going to discuss his reactions regarding all the chaos all the moves that the Steelers have done in weeks past. We're going to discuss the top Steelers first round targets in two weeks. And we have a live mock draft, collab mock draft that we're going to do once again, which should be very interesting because it's going to look a lot different than our last one. And let's see what direction we go, man. I'm very uh, interested to see uh, how that's going to turn out. But Seth, where do you want to start off, man? You want to start off with all the chaos, all the moves the Steelers have made? I think we have to. Yeah. It's funny, before we started the show here, we were all talking, and last time we did this, the quarterback room, I guess if we can start <laughs> there, the quarterback room was completely different. And I'll go on record. I'll eat some crow here. I did not think we were going to trade for Justin Fields. Mm. I thought there was a chance we could get Russell Wilson. But if you told me that we were going to get both and kick Kenny Pickett out, not only kick him out, but trade him away <laughs> to the Eagles of all the teams, the Eagles for a third. Surely I thought no one would have coughed up anything for the kid, but a mm -hmm. third. Oh man, we should start there. Let's start there. Yeah. How about Kenny Pickett, man? He is wearing number seven in Philly, which is uh, by the way, more touchdown passes than he threw last year. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, Rob, you, can you, can you confirm? Yes. Can you confirm? His jersey number is, is higher than his touchdown Damn. passes last season. Yeah. Kenny Pickett is now a Philadelphia Eagle. Unfortunately, he is still in the state of Pennsylvania, but he's on the opposite side, thankfully. And he's, he's in the worst city. And he's no longer going to be a starter in this league if he is by some form or fashion. Um, good which, luck. Which makes him an idiot. <laughs> good luck. And uh, I don't wish injury on nobody, but I would like to see Kenny Pickett start versus the Eagles whenever we face them this upcoming season. I just want to say that out loud. Just want to say out loud, man, that childish behavior that he did, that he uh, ousted before – Omar Khan said, you know what? Screw this guy. He wants out? Fine. We're going to trade him away. And then the very next day, we're going to trade for Justin Fields for a six-round pick. How do you feel about Justin Fields joining the Pittsburgh Steelers? Do you, do you like the move? Do you think this could have very high rewards? What is your immediate expectations? Well, the first thing I'll say is this. It's the same thing I said last show. Anything's really an upgrade over Kenny at this point. <laughs> That's fair. I know a lot of people think, oh, Russell Wilson is washed. Oh, Justin Fields has some issues. The one thing I'll say about Fields, because you just asked me, I definitely think he's far more athletic of an individual, and I also think he has a lot more potential. I think right from the get-go, Kenny Pickett kind of had, like, 
little borders and little kind of restrictions on what he was going to be even at his best. Um, you know, the whole talk about his hand size, the, the strength of his arm. And then as we really started to see him play, you know, the, the limited ability and how he processes the game. Um, now, a lot of those same concerns, you know, pass over to Justin Fields. A lot of people question how he processes the game, but at the very, very least, you're getting a better athlete who can use his legs a lot more. Uh, probably the second best, maybe first best runner, depending on who you're talking to. That to Lamar Jackson, you know, those two are probably the best two running quarterbacks in the NFL. He does have a very nice arm. He did go to Ohio State, so he's been in a professional system before. Um, now it's just a matter of can he tie it all together? And I think that the whole talk of, oh, well, Arthur Smith should go to the Falcons and then the Falcons should get Justin Fields. That's a perfect, right. you know, match in heaven. Um, I think that bodes well for us. You know, I think he's going to thrive in this system. I don't know when he's going to start, but I imagine he's going to start in some capacity unless Russell Wilson is like red hot comeback player of the year, like man on a mission, which is a possibility. Then I don't think Fields is really going to start, but if anything, We'll get to see him in the preseason. We'll get to do a little bit of evaluating here when training uh, camp comes up. But overall, I mean, both both signings happened when I was away from my phone. I <laughs> found out Kenny Pickett got traded when I was on a walk with my beautiful fiance. And, mm -hmm. you know, my phone started blowing up and I was like, oh, my God, we need to stop this walk <laughs> now. Their crazy shit is happening. Um, and then I was at a work dinner. Phone's off again. And I have a buddy of mine, actually, who's not a Steelers fan. He's actually a Giants fan. He's like, hey, did you see you guys just got Justin Fields? I was like, what? <laughs> like, so the, I'm just going to not have my phone on me for, like, the next month and hope some crazy stuff happens in the draft and happens with maybe some, some more free agent signing. Yeah, I mean, I remember I was at work. And then I got the notification that Kenny was traded. And I thought to myself, I got to haul ass. I got to go from zero to 100 mm -hmm. so I can get home. We got to discuss this. Yeah. And then the Justin Fields situation, we actually came back from a birthday party. And then I was yeah, walking. Yeah, I can't the, tell you. Not, don't mean to cut you off. I can't tell you the timing. The timing was impeccable. Like, I, I, like we, we, got, got, we got home from the birthday party five minutes after we went into the door. At, uh, Ian Rappaport broke the news. Yeah, I was walking the Damn. dog. Rob comes out the back door and says, Dan, check your phone. I checked my phone, and we just share like this insane, mm. mind-blown just grin across the yard. Like, it was just incredible. Mm -hmm. And it's insane that the Steelers went from like the last time we last time we talked almost a month ago, we were looking at a quarterback room consisting of Kenny Pickett, Mason Rudolph as a free agent, and Mitch Trubisky being cut. Now we have Russell Wilson, Justin Fields, and Kyle Allen. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about an upgrade? My goodness, I mean, man, incredible, incredible upgrade. And, and, and one more thing when it comes to the whole Justin Fields thing that I forgot to mention. Mm -hmm. I've never seen a group of people get so angry over a jersey number in my life. Yeah. Like if they, didn't, if they didn't give it to George Pickens, number one. They're not going to give it to Justin Fields. I mean, yes, the kicker who we're referring to, who wore number one with the Steelers, was a long time ago. But that's like one of the best kickers in football history. Like, you're not going to give that number up to someone who's still unproven. Not to mention the fact that Steelers always have the rookies pose with number one on a jersey. So, like, he was never going to get number one. Um, I think number two is kind of cool. He's got that revenge Mason Rudolph energy coming into this. But, yeah. Uh, but yeah. I mean, it's – it's another thing I'll add about Justin Fields is he definitely has a chip on his shoulder seeing how he wasn't wanted and they're inevitably going to draft Caleb Williams two weeks from now. Um I, I think he's going to obviously ride the bench. He's not going to start. Uh, but I do think there is a way that they could have him as a presence on the field. You know, very similar to how the Raiders did it with Marcus Mariota before he signed with the Falcons and Arthur Smith, how he was inserted in the red zone and read options or using his legs and his throwing oh, yeah. ability and some trick plays to keep the defenses mm -hmm. guessing. I feel like that's the way we can get Justin Fields on the, yeah. on, on the field. And, you know – make the offense just a lot less predictable because that's been a massive problem for this offense for years. Mm -hmm. What's predictability? Mm -hmm. Thank God the OC is gone. We got a new one. Not mm -hmm. only did we improve the OC, we improved the quarterback situation, which was two of the biggest things they had to fix before the offensive line. Um, and and they, they did very good in, in that 
area. Now, I, I do fear they are banking on some of their prior success, but are they upgrades? The answer is yes, and that's all we could mm -hmm. ask for right now. So, I mean, you look at the system, you look at who they added, you see what they could potentially bring to the table. The offense is just, it's a new lease on life. And, 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 uh, and you know, compensation is a really big one, too. I mean, they yep. got Russell Wilson for a bag of peanuts yeah. while Denver's paying him a king's ransom. He got Justin Fields for a six. The reports coming out earlier and why I wasn't for the whole trade is that they want a first or a second round pick for yep. a very unproven guy. Not only is it a six rounder, it's a six rounder next year. So, like, we pretty much gave a bag of peanuts and like a half eaten apple for <laughs> these two. I don't know who Omar Khan knows in the Bears Bro. front office. Like, he's got someone. Someone has, he's got like some blackmail on somebody. Something, bro. Just like, whatever, <laughs> whatever you say, con the almighty, like whatever you want. Damn. Uh, I'll even make this any sweeter and then we'll move on to the next. Um, the Steelers ultimately traded away next year's six round pick for Justin Fields. That six round pick they got in a trade for Kendrick Green last August. So essentially they traded Kendrick Green for Justin Fields. Holy fucking mm -hmm. shit. Swear jar. Mm -hmm. It's astonishing. Like, and, and, and the, the floor of this is he's going to be a very good backup. The Steelers lose nothing, yeah. nothing in this. Justin, no, Justin Fields gets a new lease on lights. This is a win for everybody. Yeah. So. And worst case scenario, you know what to do next year, and you go out and you get a quarterback. The whole thing about Kenny Pickett is that we didn't know how long they were going to hold on to him. Another year, another two years. Yeah. These two quarterbacks are on rental deals. Both are going to expire. They did decline Justin Fields' fifth uh, year option. You know, Russell Wilson only signed a one year deal. So, like, we will know come next year. From the beginning of the offseason, from the minute our regular season or postseason ends, yeah. they need a quarterback or they're not going to need a quarterback. Yes, exactly. I, I do think that they're going to bring Fields back for a cheap deal because, I mean, why why wouldn't Fields take the opportunity? And they'll pair him maybe with a rookie. That's what I'm imagining. I know that's 12 months from now, but, I mean, it's always good to, to think long term. And I think that's what Khan did with this trade is he's thinking of a plan for 2025, and he already has that – not officially, but eventually going to be uh, locked in with Justin Fields uh, for now. So Yeah, of course. As far as uh, how long Justin Fields is going to be here, keep in mind he wanted to come here. Yep. He told the Bears representatives and Ryan Poles, I want to come to Pittsburgh. I want to go to the Steelers. Well, the agents told him, like, it's, it's Pittsburgh or nowhere else. So the Bears had no other choice but to send them, send him to the Steel City. So yeah. it's a win-win for uh, all, the, all those guys. Um, the Steelers also signed Patrick Queen and Deshaun Elliott filling in holes at linebacker and safety. How do you feel about these moves, man? Two former Ravens. Not <laughs> only is a signing so sweet, but when it comes from a rival who yep. you really don't like, it makes it that much better. Yeah. In a similar token, when we've lost Mike Hilton to the Bengals, when we've lost Arthur Mollett to the Ravens. Like, it stings when we lost James Harrison to the Patriots. It stings. Um, but then gaining someone from the, from the you know, enemy is, is even better. And I just if, – if you out there, Steelers Nation, have not listened to his press conference that happened like a day <laughs> or two after he got signed, watch it. You're going to learn everything you need to know about this guy. He is on a revenge tour. He yep. wants to be the villain. Let him embrace that mentality. I'm I'm all for it. This is probably the best linebacker we have had probably since Shazier. I yeah. mean, it has been a long, long time coming. That was um, seven years ago. Six, seven years it, ago. Yeah, wow. And and the disrespect that he's already getting, oh, well, he was that good because of Roquan. Right. I don't doubt that his play was elevated because of Roquan, but also, like, stop. He's gotten better. And it's like any time a person puts on the Steelers uniform, up oh, their immediate value just drops because it's the Steelers. So right. that that and that is an amazing, amazing signing. Um, I mean that that alone right there, I was like, bam, the draft could start right now, and I'd be happy with the way free agency went. Really. Um, and Deshaun Elliott, um, I give him like a solid like B plus signing. I was kind of surprised there were other um, safety prospects at the time where I was like okay you went with that instead but when you look at how much he's probably going to be making and when you also look at the fact that you're spending already so much on Micah Fitzpatrick yep. it makes sense he's a smart guy 
He's wearing 25, so maybe he channels some of that Ryan Clark energy. You know? <laughs> he is going to be your true strong safety. Um, he's going to be a good complement to the other guys we have on the roster at that position. Um, and who knows? There, um, you know, there could be a world even in which some, you know, some guy named Justin Simmons even joins yeah. the team from recent rumors and stuff like that. Uh, I'm just teasing. I don't, I don't think he's going to join. <laughs> but I also didn't think we'd get Justin Fields exactly. on this show. So maybe this is the, the superstitious energy we need. Yeah, tomorrow I mean, we'll find out Simmons joined. Exactly. Anything is possible under Omar Khan. That's the one thing that we have been uh, under the impression with him the past two years, but especially this season, this offseason already. And we got to draft in two weeks, which we give him the utmost trust. He's going to knock that out of the park like he did last year. Um, mm-hmm. But, yeah, Deshaun Elliott, he wants to be here. He couldn't express that even more in his, uh, in his uh, press conference. Two, two years, six million with a 1.5 million dollar signing bonus, which is the only guaranteed portion of his contract. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can't ask for a cheaper deal for an upgrade at strong safety. There were better options. I agree with you, but I mean, you see the impact he's made for the Ravens, Lions, um, Dolphins. Dolphins last year. He's very good in the run support. He's going to let Minka roam around and do what he needs to do. He's going to let mm-hmm. Roquan roam around the middle. I mean, this this is just a a, a signing that completely solidifies. The defense, in my opinion. Um, mm-hmm. Another hole going into this offseason was cornerback. Cornerback two specifically. And now this is just my personal opinion. Temporarily, they, they, they filled it. The Steelers traded away Deontay Johnson to the Panthers for Deontay Jackson and some pick swaps. How do you feel about the Steelers trading away Deontay, uh, yeah, Deontay Johnson and getting Deontay Jackson back? I'll start with the Deontay Jackson part because I think the Deontay Johnson thing is a little bit more of a loaded aspect. Dante Jackson is interesting. Uh, he's the fastest, the fastest secondary player we have on the team right now. I think mm-hmm. that that speed definitely interests the Steelers. I also think they value his production. I mean, he was probably the second best cornerback on the Panthers roster. Yeah. Uh, so they're probably looking at it as we get your second best cornerback. You get our second best wide receiver, some pick swappage. Um, but overall, I don't hate it. Again, do I feel uber comfortable about him being the guy opposite Joey Porter Jr.? No, but do I feel better than how we were at the end of the year with like Patrick Peterson and Levi Wallace? Yes, I think he is a notch above both of those guys right now in their careers. Um, I don't think he's going to be the long-term starter at the position. I think that they still will look at maybe a cornerback in the draft or maybe even bringing in a free agent here. Um, And another thing we have to realize, too, is that they really liked Darius Rush last year coming out Mm -hmm. of the draft. He was on the team almost the whole second half of the season. Um, They didn't get rid of him. So that's a guy to look out for. Corey Trice is very injury prone, so I have a giant red flag, you know, tempering my expectations on what he can do. But right. he's another guy there. Luke Barku is another guy who was like, I think at one point reporters were calling him like the best, you know, cornerback person in practice squads like around the NFL. So like they have guys, but I think right now, outside of Joey Porter Jr., the best option they have has to be Dante Jackson. And before anybody says, oh, well, they'll move him into the slot and then they'll put some. At this point in his career, he's an outside guy. Mm-hmm. You know, slot corner is its own beast. It's, there's a reason why people get drafted for that specific reason. Also, if you look at all the players the Steelers are bringing in for pre draft visits, yep. they're mainly slot cornerback players. So I would think that one of those guys, I don't know when, but I think one of those guys is going to be drafted. Um, as far as the Deontay Johnson trade, I'll go on record in saying I wasn't the biggest fan of us signing him since day one. I was actually, okay. it was the year that I met y'all at the Steelers draft party. Yeah. And I remember the, me and my dad were in the hotel room kind of relaxing and that pit came on the screen. We both kind of looked at each other like, what? Um, and, you know, rest in peace, our old wide receivers coach um, was very, very big on him. And Dale I Drake. just think ever since then, he just wasn't the same. There were always kind of mental lapses. There, you know, was the drops issue, um, you know. And to me, it was more of the attitude thing that really started to piss me off. The fact that he just, like, 
the, the any time he get the ball, you would have thought he just won the Super Bowl with that catch. Like I don't <laughs> want somebody who's that cocky. Twenty four. You all know what I'm talking about. I yeah. like, close my eyes and I see exactly how he's acting. Um, so you know what? We know George Pickens is the future moving forward. Yep. We knew that Deontay Johnson was not worth the money that he was being paid. We knew that he had issues, and and more so than any of that, Homeboy was injured every single season yep. he was with us like he never had a full clean bill of health so all those things together goodbye dj never really wanted you appreciate what you did with us but have fun in uh in the shadow realm over there with the uh, carolina panthers yeah i couldn't agree more um i would say after everything um that this team is is easily improved from last year already and we still have the draft to to hit now there are obviously still some holes which is why the draft is here uh, f- for for some reason which i'm still shocked about the steelers did not add any bodies to the offensive line via free agency not one mm. no one yeah um so obviously offensive line is still a need now wide receiver mm-hmm. is, is is an immense need we're still getting a mm-hmm. slot corner so these are some of the biggest holes we are looking mm-hmm. at as we head into the draft with as of now four Top 100 picks. Mm-hmm. So, in your opinion, as we'll, we'll merge into the first round talk here, what do you think is mm-hmm. the biggest need on the team right now? That is a very loaded question. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I think the reason why we didn't go any offensive line in free agency is, in my opinion, there were like two good people in you know free agency, and then there was like, a bunch of everybody yeah, else. That's fair. It wasn't like, very loaded. No, it wasn't. And this draft is stacked at the two positions we need. It's very deep in tackle and it's very deep in center. Mm-hmm. Um, now, about three weeks ago, if you would have told me what is the biggest position I need, I would have said center. Um, and I still think to an extent it is the biggest position of need because you can't have a football team if you don't have someone snapping the ball. Yeah. And I don't think Nate Herbig's that guy. I don't think James Daniel is that guy. I don't think anybody that Spencer Anderson, I don't think any of those guys are going to be snapping the football. Yeah. However, to me, the biggest need right now is going to be a wide receiver too, because in the first round, and here's my, here's my reasoning why Mm -hmm. I don't think it's going to be a tackle in, in round one, because to me, there's only one tackle worth a pick in the first round without having to dip into some kind of meh, prospect right and that's talise fuaga and mm-hmm. i think he's fantastic if he's there at 20 or even within like three or four picks i would do whatever i could to get him because he is a franchise right tackle i mean he's a he's a beast you've talked about him a bunch i've talked mm-hmm. about him a bunch like we don't need to go too much into detail yeah as of now he is my biggest it was jpj but i understand that the center value is dropping and i gotta follow yeah. that but yes fuaga is as of now, my biggest wish, but I don't see him getting past the Raiders at 13. No, no. And that's the thing is, is I think he's going to go very early. I, I think outside of, you know, Alt and uh, um, Ola Fashanu, I mm-hmm. don't think he's going to, he'll be the third guy taken off. And, and we would have to trade up pretty high to do that. And I don't think they want to do that. If they did go tackle, if they really wanted to go tackle there at 20, there's two guys that could be there and the Marius Mims. And Troy Fontanu, um, Fontanu, I I've never, I've Tau, I don't know. Yeah, Tr- we'll call him Troy. Troy. Um, there's only one Troy though. <laughs> yeah, right. There's only one Troy. Mims is an interesting prospect because is he very raw? Yes. Does he show a lot of signs of greatness? Yes. But injuries are an issue. His limited production in college, whether or not that was because he was injured or whether or not he was, you know just behind a lot of really good guys in Georgia. Mm. Playing only eight games is alarming to me. And I think a lot of Steelers fans need to temper their expectations and remember that lightning never strikes the same place twice. Right. Like, just because Broderick Jones was a tackle from Georgia and he was fantastic does not mean you're going to get another tackle from Georgia and he's going to be fantastic. Um, and then with Troy, the other Troy, yeah. Um, he primarily played most of his snaps in college at right tackle. I think he, or excuse me, left, left tackle. tackle. I right. think he could transition to right tackle. I think he's smart enough. Not really concerned about his arm length as much as some people are. I think he's very physically gifted. He's very um, athletic. But 
the issue that I run in with the tackle position is I think the Steelers have a lot more faith in Dan Moore than we want them to. I, I think agree. that's the problem. I agree. I, I don't think it's that Dan Moore is better. I don't even think Dan Moore is going to be the starter come like week five or six. Right. I just think the Steelers like him more than we as fans like him. Um, so tackle to me is completely out of, for me, I don't think tackle is necessary at round one. I think that you could find a really good tackle in round two, three, four. They've done their research. They've looked at guys like Glover, Fisher. Um, they've met with guys at the senior bowl. You know, they've met with, they, they have their options covered there. Right. So then it comes down to center and wide receiver. And you just mentioned the main reason why I don't think center is going to be the pick at 20. I just think everybody views center less and less and less. So their value is steadily dropping. So if all of 32 teams don't value center that much, that means that if we don't take a guy at 20, if, if we don't move back, if we just sit there at 20 and do nothing, we don't take a, a, a center at 20. I think that a center re realistically isn't taken until maybe the Cowboys. Yeah. And again, the Cowboys have a million other needs that they could go with, you know? So I don't, I don't know what they're going to do at center. I, I definitely think they're going to take one. Um, you know, there's a lot of reports circulating, a bunch of different Steelers, Steelers media that, you know, they like Barton, they like Frazier, they like JPJ. The only thing I'll say is this. The Steelers will draft whoever they bring in for a top 30 visit. That's how they've worked the yep. past two, three years now. They don't bring them in for a top 30 visit, pre-draft visit. They're not drafting them in the first round. So right now there's only one center that they could possibly take. They don't add anybody else between now and the draft, and that's Jackson Powers Johnson. And I'd be happy with him at 20. Um, if they move back and trade back, I'd be happy That's even with better. There. Absolutely. Um, but there are going to be other guys that they can select come round two, um, come even maybe round three, depending on how the board falls. You know, no one thought that Darnell Washington was going to make it out of round one. Yeah. And he came to us in round three. So maybe Zach Frazier falls a little bit more than people think. Maybe Cedric Van Pran falls more than people think. Yeah. Um, same could be said about Jackson Powers Johnson. Um, I think Graham Barton is going to be first round no matter what. Yeah. Whether that's guard or center. Agreed. But those other three pure center prospects, I think, will go in round two. So to answer a long-winded question, I think their biggest need right now is wide receiver. And you're probably thinking, wide receiver? They have George Pickens. What are you, nuts? This is a loaded wide receiver draft. What are you, nuts? Here's the thing, though. The only player we have on this team that is a legitimate wide receiver <laughs> option, even in a running back heavy scheme, is George Pickens. And I love George Pickens. But what if, knock on wood, what if something happens? He has to go out for half a game. You know, he needs a breather. You don't want to then become one-dimensional and be a run-only team because you have no viable wide receiver option. Yeah, and I'll, and, I'll show your screen. I'll, I'll show your spreadsheet here. Um, yeah. Because look at our depth. Pickens, Van Jefferson, Quez Watkins, Calvin Austin the third. Is that it? That's it. That's Cordell, it. Cordell Patterson, maybe. Maybe. Well, That's I mean, a stretch. Like, That's like yeah, really like, emergency. Yeah. So like it you in any good football team system, however you want to look at it, you at least need to be too deep. Any good football team has at least two really good wide receivers. And I think the best football teams out there don't have a true number one. They just have two really good playmakers. So to me, if I can get someone who's going to give me that George Pickens level of ability and skill in round one, whether that be a pick 20 or whether or not they move back, I'm okay with that because I'm not true convinced that come pick 51, you're going to find the guy you need. Yes, there are really good guys out there like Malachi Corley, Ricky Pearsall, mm -hmm. Xavier Leggett, guys, you know, Lad McConkey. But there are also a lot of other teams that are going to take their wide receiver come the beginning of round two. I would not be shocked if probably like six or seven wide receivers went in round two at the beginning just because they make Xavier Worthy, like the list goes on. They're just going to be teams that take all those wide receivers very, very early on. So I'm not too convinced. I don't want to take a chance at 51 and say, hmm, who am I going to take at 51? You know, Roman Wilson or, you know, like Jalen McMillan or Troy Franklin? No, I'd rather take my guy in round one. So to me, wide receiver and how good this class is, if I could get a top three wide receiver 
But because of how deep the class is, I get him at pick 20, I'm running to the podium. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm open to literally anything on the table at 20. They could go a plethora of of directions. Um, if I had to, if I had to give you three positions specifically, they will most likely target. It's it's what he stated. It's wide receiver, tackle, or center. Yeah. You know our opinion on center. We are still very hell bent on center. The sign is still there for a reason, mm-hmm. and a part of me still wants them to go center in the first round because it is literally our, in, in my opinion. I know yours is receiver, but in our opinion, it's, mm-hmm. it's center. And center is not as deep as tackle or as receiver or even mm-hmm. as cornerback. I'd feel more comfortable solidifying one of the top guys and fixing that hole for 10 years and still falling back on stack other positions. That's just mm-hmm. my mindset. Uh, but like you stated, and, and it's, it's being shown in previous years and reports coming out in the past weeks, center is falling off the draft board. People don't value it. Teams don't value it as much as they – as they probably should, but yeah, we could get a JPJ maybe day two if we're lucky enough, or a Zach Frazier, or a Cedric Van Pran. Um, if they want to go receiver, it's definitely going to be one of the few guys that they have brought in for top 30 visits. In fact, I'll, I'll bring you guys some of the list of, of, of people that they have brought in for top 30 visits. Uh, A.D. Mitchell from, from Texas, who is definitely going to be a hot commodity at 20, undoubtedly. He's going to be a first-rounder. Um, Ricky Persall, he's a day two option. Malachi Corley, he's a day two option. Uh, Taj Washington from USC, he's a day three option. Same thing with a Luke McCaffrey. So if you're looking at receiver in the first round, the only guy that fits that bill is A.D. Mitchell. Maybe Xavier Leggett, who they also brought in, but 20 might be a little too rich for him. Just a little bit. I wouldn't hate it, but it might be just a little too no, much listen, of a reach. I, I like Leggett. I think he has all the potential in the world. He has... DK frame with AJ Brown production like potential, but I think twenty is a little bit too high for him. I agree. Uh, one Great. guy, one guy, I, I'm surprised isn't on the list, and maybe we should expect him to be in for a top thirty visit shortly. Is Brian Thomas from LSU? Um, I know they sent the wide receiver coach Zach Asani to the Texas Pro Day, and he had a close interaction with all of the Texas receivers. That include mm. that includes Mitchell, that includes Worthy, and that includes Winnington. Um, they also sent the assistant general manager, Andy Waddle, to the LSU Pro Day. If I'm correct, that's the only Pro Day he attended. I might be wrong, yeah. but he's, he absolutely has his fingerprints on a lot of what has happened this offseason and last offseason mm-hmm. and last year's draft. Mm-hmm. Like He is mm-hmm. involved a lot more than people might want to think. So I'm surprised Brian Thomas hasn't been brought in. Maybe we should expect mm-hmm. that. In regards to tackle, they have brought in Talisi Fuaga, Amarius Mims, Blake Fisher, Matt Gunkovich from Pitt, who's more of the local visit, uh, Travis Glover, uh, Stephen Stephen Jones. So those are the only tackles, really, that they've brought in. Um, Same with Brandon Fisher and Tyler Guyton just recently. Really? Yes. That's news to me. Yeah. Yeah, Brandon, or is it Blake Fisher? Blake Fisher. Blake Fisher. Blake Fisher was yesterday, so Tyler yeah. Guyton must have been today. Yeah, Tyler Guyton was today. Blake Fisher was yesterday, so they're kind of looking. I mean, Tyler Guyton's uh, like a borderline late day one Early day yeah. two type tackle. He's really raw. He he he's got he's got the tools, but he's definitely a work in progress. Blake, uh, Blake mm-hmm. Fisher is is another developmental guy, but he's more of a late day two type of prospect. Right. If they want to look at tackle later in the draft. In, in regards of yeah. center, um, Jackson Powers Johnson's been the only top thirty visit regards to center. And if you want to include Zach Frazier as a local visit, then yes, he was in for that as well. Mm-hmm. If there's any other names they could add there, I would expect hopefully a Brian Thomas, maybe a J C Latham from Alabama. Maybe a uh, Cedric Van Pran. Maybe that's just me being hopeful, but I would imagine. Grant Barton, hopefully. Yeah, Grant Barton, absolutely, because mm-hmm. he has been uh, a favorite for the Steelers the past couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. How do you feel about Grant Barton? Everyone's saying that he could play center. He hasn't played center since 2020. He can play it. He's a great player. He's a hard worker. So I don't hate it, but do you want to go with another one of these tackle guard hybrid switch to center? I have a few thoughts about it. First thought I have about it is homeboy is coming from Duke. So he's smart yeah. as a whip. Yeah. Um, second thing, his RAS score, take that with a grain of salt. For those who don't know, it's just your raw athletic score. He scored pretty much a perfect grade in 9.99. Yeah. So yeah. he is athletic as all get out. So I think he has the athleticism to transfer to center. Remember, Arthur Smith, say whatever you want. 
not the best head coach in the world when he was there with the Falcons, but he mm-hmm. built a damn good line. He yeah. built a top three offensive he line, did. top five, top three offensive line in the league. So if there's anybody I trust to be like, I know who to bring in, it would be that guy. Um, he has position versatility. I think that's the, the little asterisk, the thing the Steelers like most about him. Absolutely. He played reps at tackle, guard, and center. And he was successful at all three. Regardless of who they bring in at center, I'll caution you all right now. Whether that's JPJ, Zach Frazier, Cedric Van Pran, Van Park, I guarantee you they're not a starter day one. The Steelers never have their rookies be starters day one. Pretty much never. So I think that they're going to draft a guy, and then they'll bring in some free agent center we probably never heard of before. That guy will be the starter probably all up until maybe week one or two, and then it'll be the switch. That's just how they do business, as annoying as that is. So if, I'll, if, I'll it, if, if it is Graham Barton, I don't want him to start right off the bat because being a center in college is one. Mm-hmm. Being a center in the NFL, and you got these ginormous six-foot-five behemoths running at you, mm, I don't care how athletic you are. That would, that would make me a little bit nervous. Yeah, as we saw evidently with Kendrick Green. And no, Graham Barton is not the prospect that Kendrick Green was. He, in fact, he is a thousand times better, but you are right. Um, I, I'm more so of the boat that let's just get a pure center. Let's just stop fooling around with this hybrid versatile. Let's just let's just yeah. get an, a pure center and just yeah. fix the hole. That that's how I see it. Just fill the need. Yeah. Um, and and I think a lot of this stuff might be we're going to be seeing a lot of smoke screens. You know. Yes. To me, the whole Graham Barton thing, the whole Amarius Mims thing gives me a lot of flashbacks to Malik Willis. The Steelers love Malik Willis. They they want Malik Willis. They're very interested in him. And then come draft day, Kenny Pickett. We're all like, what? I think they're smokescreening the crap out of us. I just don't know who the smokescreen is and who they actually want. It's, for all we know, this could all be a bunch of fluff, and 20 comes around, and it's Jackson Powers Johnson. It was always Jackson Powers Johnson, and everything else was a bunch of lies. Um or it could be something completely different. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm not sure, but yeah, I'm in the I'm in the mindset. Just get a center. Just get a center. Yeah. Don't. We're not. We're not an offensive line factory. Okay. It's not like he's going to the Patriots where he could like learn and be transferred into this amazing center. We're not that kind. We do that with wide receivers, and we do that with edge rushers. I don't have faith in us being able to make this super offensive lineman uh, from college. No, yeah, especially with uh, how we've been developing guys and putting them out of position, and still are, frankly. I mean, yeah, it's it's it, that, that's a concern there. Uh, the dark horse pick at 20 or in the first round could be corner. They have looked at some of the top corners. In fact, they brought in only mm-hmm. one for a top 30 visit. That is Nate Wiggins. In fact, if you look at the, the, the previous Steelers trend of how they select their first-round picks, which is typically a combine interview, combine visit, um, pro day attendance and a top 30 visit. There's mm-hmm. only two guys that they have done that to all off season. And they're both will be first rounders. That is Amaris Mims and Nate Wiggins. Now this could be a year that that trend breaks because that is how Kevin Colbert and Tomlin did business. Omar Khan, we get a different sense in everything he's doing. Mm-hmm. So he could very well break that trend, but I want to talk about corner. Could you see them taking corner in the first round? Do you think it's a, a that big of a necessity? Do you think they could wait for corner? Because they they very well could, man. There's a lot of slot guys they can grab day till. Before we go into corner, I'll preface, there's one more player you're missing that they did that triage with. A.D. Mitchell is the last person that they had a did? formal oh, combine really? interview with. Formal combine interview, brought him in for a pre-draft visit, and our position coach had a very lengthy talk with well, him. I, I was talking visit. specifically Khan and Tomlin, but you are correct. Oh, you gotcha, are correct. Gotcha, gotcha. Then you are correct. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, do I think they could go cornerback? I mean, yes, anything's a possibility, but I don't I don't think it's Nate Wiggins. I think I think if they're gonna go anybody in the cornerback room round one, they would have to have like Mitchell or Arnold like drop yeah. into our arms at twenty. Also, I just think they really like Jackson. I mean, in the interviews that they gave, they talked about they were glowing over Dante Jackson. Yeah. Um, and he's the outside guy. Like you, you're not gonna, you didn't bring Dante Jackson in here for his speed to be a slot corner. That makes zero sense. Um, I just think Nick Wiggins is one of those guys that they're gonna do their due diligence on. That God forbid 
every tackle, every center, and every wide receiver they want isn't there. They can go, well, at least I can get Nate Wiggins. I know who he is. They just don't want to have happen to them the whole Artie Burns situation again. So they're <laughs> going to make sure that they know every single guy so that they're not reaching on somebody like that. Right. Yeah, I could, I could, I would hope that's the case. I mean, they're doing their due diligence with a lot of positions. They're bringing in some of the 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 most realistic targets at twenty or whenever they they're going to select. Because um, I I do want to ask this question before we move on. Could you see them making any trade possible in the first round? That's in regards to trading up or trading back. Do you think it's uh, smart? Who do you think they should trade up for? Do you think they should trade back for extra picks? So I I do think a trade is possible. Um, I think anything is really possible with Omar Khan. I think mm -hmm. he's shown that. Um, I don't know if we're going to be able to find a trade partner to go up um, because that's a lot of people always say like, oh, Steelers should trade up. Well, you need a partner to do so. You need to find someone who's going to want to move back. Right. And I feel like the teams that we have to trade to go up and get their pick from, they're going to want a top tackle. They're going to want a top wide receiver. or They're going to want a top quarterback. So you're not going to want – to trade with those people because they're going to fleece a lot of stuff out of you to go up there. I think if anything, we should move back because a lot of the guys that we're talking about, A.D. Mitchell, Jackson Power Johnson, Graham Barton, Nate Wiggins, Cooper DeGene, like those are guys that are going to be there probably around 25, 27. Um, two names that pop out of my mind immediately, Arizona Cardinals. Mm -hmm. They're a team that's probably going to want to get Kyler Murray some weapons. Yep. And if they take a wide receiver or a tight end with that, what is it, fourth pick, maybe there's another, you know, lineman that they really want at 20. Maybe they want a guy like an Amarius Mims. Maybe they want a guy like, you know, Troy. Um, and they have, that, they have capital to trade, man. Yeah, they have, if yeah. I'm reading correctly, 4, 27, 35, 66, 71, and 90, all in the top 100. I mean, that's a lot they can give up. That's the one that you're going to see a lot of. You're going to see Arizona partnered with us a bunch in mock drafts just because it makes the most sense. They have a lot of capital. They need things, um, and they're not in our conference. The Bills is another one where it's like, yes, they need a wide receiver, but I, wouldn't, I personally don't think the Steelers are going to want to trade with a – really what they view in their mind is a contender a right. really good team with josh allen so if i think anything it's going to be the cardinals um maybe another maybe like the cowboys or something like a, a team that's in the nfc that's maybe only five or six picks behind 20 and then you're going to probably get maybe another second or third yep. so you're getting more compensation and you won't have to reach on a guy at 20. You know, if we switch back to with the Cardinals and we're sitting there pretty at 27, they can take any position we talked about here on this show thus far, and I'd be so happy with it, whether that's a center, whether that's a corner, whether that's a wide receiver. Um, I just think that I, I still think they're going to sit there at 20, but I think that there is the next best thing they would do is move back. So yeah. I think it's stay put at 20. Option two, move back. Option three, the, the least likely of all the options is Simmons and Buck. I agree in, in that order. I'll throw this other one at you if they do want to trade back. Because say Latham, say Mims, say whoever else is all gone, um, then they will most likely trade back, and they can still get their guy, whether that is receiver or center, right? Um, mm -hmm. I'll throw this one at you. How about the Packers? They have a lot yeah. of capital to trade because of the A-Rod trade they made last year. I really like them as a fit that fits with what you said about out of conference. They have 25, 41, mm -hmm. 58, 88, 91, all in the top 100. They got capital mm -hmm. to, to to trade, to trade up for maybe they want another edge guy. Maybe they want to fix the offensive line. They just lost David Bakhtiari. So they, they could mm -hmm. they could definitely trade up to fulfill a, a massive hole that they don't think is going to be there at 25 because mm -hmm. they had very good success under Jordan Love, and they're going to – obviously want to protect him and give him more weapons or stack the defense in any regard. So mm -hmm. I'm going to throw that out there. I think the Packers is a very good trade partner. I like your idea of the Cardinals as well. Um, mm -hmm. if, if they trade up, I think it's either going to be with the Vikings or the Broncos, which are at 11 and 12 respectively, because they don't have a lot of capital. In mm -hmm. fact, I think the Broncos don't have a round two pick and the mm -hmm. um, Vikings don't have a round three pick. So if they want to trade back for extra capital, which they could really use, then, yeah, I think those are partners for the Steelers to call. And it's right in front of the Raiders for my hopes and dreams, which is Talisi Fuaga. But 
that that's just my own personal pipe dream. Maybe maybe, mm-hmm. maybe it happens, maybe it doesn't. But yeah, I, I'm yeah. gonna throw that out there. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, anything is possible. You're absolutely right. I mean, just look at last year, for example, what Omar Khan did. He traded up for Broderick, and then day two, he traded back. So he did both last year on both yeah. day one and day two. So he could do one, he could do the other, he could do both again. But he's and got I the capital think, to do both. I do think there's a world even that they can maybe trade back into round five, similar to when we did that with Isaiah Loudermilk, just yep. because we have two six. And I think you could package them or you could figure out some way to move back into a fifth say if there's a tackle that they really like that's still there or maybe that there's a cornerback that they like that's fallen a bunch um you know or, or, or something of that sort maybe another wide receiver that's still there so we'll see yeah absolutely we we, we shall see um big bad pitbull in the chest is trade with green bay pittsburgh trade number 20 and 51 to packers or to, to the green bay for 25 41 and 126 um, I'm not going to spoil anything for our next mock, but who gave you our script? <laughs> I'll just throw it out there. Ours is a little more different, but yeah, I mean, that's kind of what we kind of had in mind. It's, it's, it's close enough. It's close enough. It's close enough. But, uh, that's why I bring up the Packers. Cause I kind of already have that instilled for our next mock, which I think will be coming next week. Cause we got two more mocks coming out. We got next week's mock and we got the one obviously right before the draft. So you guys can anticipate those. Um, Seno, anything else you want to get into before we get into the live mock here? Let's do it. All righty. Let's get, let's do it. Let's put our, let's enter the war room here. All right. Let's get this up here. Let me All get right. the, uh, there's too many tabs open here. Uh, well, that's your fault. There we go. There you go. Can you see that perfectly? I can see that perfectly. Perfect. All right. Hopefully the, the chat can see that we are on pro football network here to do a live collab mock. This should be very interesting because it's going to be. A lot different than our last one. That's all I know for now. All right, so let me get me let me get myself organized. Let's hit resume draft. Everything will be selected. And now we have a trade offer from the Ravens. No, thank you. No way. No. Look at fourteen. <laughs> uh, the other trade offers with the Chiefs. Um, no. No, thank you. We didn't even want to give them Deontay. Why? What, like, no. We're not gonna. So trade do, up do we want to entertain no. a trade? Okay, first of all, I'm not even. Th- I'm looking at the draft board right now. I'm looking at the draft board right now, and I'm not even going to discuss. Seth, you already know where we should go. I mean, he's just sitting there. He's just sitting there. He's in the palm of our hands, bro. In some odd universe, I wish. Could happen in two weeks. He's right there, right? Like I think we're all in a grant at number 14. Let's put it this way. If he was there, I would be hard-pressed to think they would trade him down at all. Um... How could you? You know what I mean? I mean, look who, look who else is there. If, if you didn't take him, maybe Adonai Mitchell. But again, n- not over Fuaga. Not, not over that tackle of the future. No. Not under your legitimate day one starting right tackle. I mean, come uh, 100%. on. 100%. And so. you would finally move Broderick over to left. And Dan Moore is just a swing guy, a bench warmer. Case closed. Okay, so before I select Talisi Fuaga, do you want to execute a trade and potentially move up for a center? Do you want to do any trades in this, or do you just want to be as basic as possible? I think we can do trades, but you can't trade away from Fuaga. You can't. Well, I mean, like, trade up for a center before I select it, because once I select it, everything simulates. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right, let me see. Oh, no. Uh, let, let's find out. Um, well, JPJ just went to the, to the box at 26. That makes sense. I can see it. I can see it. So I don't know. I I, I have a feeling that the outside of like Graham Barton, I think they view Jackson Power Johnson, Frazier, and Cedric Van Pran very similarly. I think it's like one A, one B, one C. I don't think they have that much of a hold of one guy over the other. Yeah. You know. Um, So I'm I'm gonna say stay put at fifty one, and then maybe from there you could you could move down maybe or move. Let's see what we got. Uh, no, thank you. With the line? What am I going to do with the third rounder now? Like, no. no, thank you. Um, let's reject. All right, now we're sitting here at fifty-one. Uh, Zach Frazier went to the Panthers at thirty-three. Very realistic. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Um, it's a lot of defensive guys. It's a lot of defensive guys here. Let's look at uh. What does the wide receiver's position look like? Here? Yeah, because that um, could be a realistic. Yeah, Roman Wilson, it. Ricky Parasol, Jalen McMillan, Tez Walker. And just to reiterate for the audience, 
this is why I get nervous about not taking a one receiver in yeah. round one because you're going to be penciled into, like, thankfully, Pearsall is still there. Um, outside of that, though, you get into a very interesting position where it's like, mm-hmm. is this person really going to be that much better than, you know, Van Jefferson at, in, in that position? Right. Um, so I don't know. So so Pearsall is there. I mean, they've shown a lot of interest in him, but but centers also. Yeah. And after after Cedric Van Praen, you really don't have anything. Else. You, you no, don't. No. You don't. And I'm not I'm not a, I'm not the biggest fan of Lima or Bortolini. Uh, mm, nah. Only because I don't view them as day one starters outside of Van Praen. The value drops significantly. Um, what you said about wide receiver not taking one in the first round, I feel the same way about center because. I, there's a lot of center needy teams after day one if they don't select them day one, man. I mean, like you said, the Panthers, the the Cowboys, the Eagles, the Bucks, like, the, the Bills. Here's the way I see it. I, I don't see how the top three centers, either of them, even Van Pran, make it to round three. I, I don't see the Steelers no. waiting till round three to select the center considering we don't have one yet. Yeah, I, I'm just Correct. not comfortable with that at all. I know a lot of people mock mm-hmm. Van Pran in the third, and I get why you do that, but... Me, part, I'm just not a fan of it. I am not trying to get into a Kendrick Green situation again where we wait till the third to select the center. I just rather get the mm-hmm. center and move on. <laughs> yeah, so, so. I think I think Van Pran right here would be a would be a wise move. I just don't think they're going to want to wait that long. Do you want to trade and up? If, and if you look too, I mean, Max Melton just left. Malachi Corley too, very big. Oh, player. that's a bummer. Yep. If either one of those guys were there, then especially Corley, you could kind of mm, debate it. But I still think Van Pran has got to be your guy here yeah. at, uh, what is this, 51. 51, yeah. Um, before I select Van Pran here, do you want to trade up after 51 for a receiver? Because we could do that. We have we have two thirds. Mm, is, there anyone, is there anyone here outside of Persol? I'm not the biggest guy on Wilson. Mm-mm. Same thing with McMillan. I'm just trying to think of. I like Malik Washington a lot. I think he's going to be a stud. I don't know if he's an yeah. outside guy, though. I think based off of who they brought in, the next prospects outside of Pearsall that you could look at realistically would be like McCaffrey and Washington. Yeah. Taj Washington and Luke McCaffrey. Right. Obviously down here, um, which are day three options. Um I know they went to the Alabama Pro Day. They're looking at a Jermaine Burton. I know he has character issues, though. That's a concern. As someone who's a huge Bama fan, he's garbage. <laughs> okay, well, God I'll, I'll take your word for it. He, he ain't all that in the bag of chips. About uh, no. Tez Walker. Maybe he's there at, at 84. Yeah, maybe maybe he's there later. I don't think you would need to trade into the second round. For, okay. Uh, all right, let's select uh, CVPG. And, uh, Is ask- it Van Pran or Van Prawn? Because I hear both. I think it's Pran. I always always under the uh, impression it was Pran. I was under the impression it was Pran too. Okay, we're gonna call it Van Pran. Okay, so the O line is set. All right, now we're looking at receiver. We have to go receiver here. McMillan, Tez Walker. Yeah, Pearsall's gone. Mm. Pearsall is gone. Pearsall was selected right by the Bears. You bastards. I see how it is, Chicago. I see how. Hear it is. me out. Hear me out. What is the slot corner? Oh, I like that. Okay, this Just is interesting. Just because Luke McCaffrey and Ted I mean, Washington are like round four guys at the earliest. I mean, so. Sam are still. I mean, I know they like Andrew Phillips. They did. they brought him in for a top thirty visit. I would expect Sam was told to be up next. There's Jerry and Jones. I really like maybe round four. All right, Andrew Phillips. They brought in for a top thirty visit. Yeah. I I remember if we if we go back to that spreadsheet. Slot corner, cornerback three is still wide open. Still giant hole. Nobody has filled that position. Right. Um, so I think Sandra Sill is a great option there. I just don't think a wide – the only wide receiver that I could see them maybe thinking about taking here in this point is McMillan, and he's like a – he's like the third wheel. He, he's like a, a good third wide receiver, but he's not a good number two. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, I, I just don't think the value at wide receiver is there for any of these guys. But, Do but we, um, uh, Or even defensive tackle. What's D-tackle look like? They've been mm-hmm. doing a lot of D-tackle. Mason Smith. 
Mason Smith. That's another good one. That's a very, but, um, very realistic, by the way. I mean, Carl Dunbar has been the only one pro day, and it was LSU, and they got three cats coming out of there. They got not just him, but Andy Weidel. And Andy Weidel is all about finding those late-round gems and building the trenches. Yeah, building the trenches for And sure. Mason Smith, yeah. I, I know he had that 2022 ACL scare, and he didn't really uh, bounce back perfectly, but it's not like he's going to start day one. If I had to put my stamp on it, I'd probably go with my slot corner here and then see if either one of those wide receivers or Mason Smith is there at the end of the third. That's okay. just me, though. Okay. I mean, we'll go with you because, I mean, Sam is still just kind of – I'm, I'm kind of fanboying You got to lock down slot corner. I'm sorry. I mean, like, you, you got to fill that position. Mason Smith was just selected by the Cowboys. That's, that's – that. why do I see that being incredibly – That's realistic? the most – yeah, that – but that's oh, they okay, all, they, and, yeah, they, and they and they and, and they selected Brandon uh, or Graham Barton in the first round, which I can also see. Um, but also, there's a really good defensive tackle I like who we'll talk about when we get there in the later rounds. That is it? I think the Steelers it, are very interested. in. Is it who I think it is? Is it Christian Boyd? It is not Christian Boyd. Oh no, but they did bring Christian Let's, Boyd I'll, in I'll for a visit. A little, he met with Carl Dunbar at his pro day. Or excuse me, out of this pro day at the combine, he had to talk with Carl Dunbar. Interesting. It's a big deal. Okay. Okay. Um, you must. And be they brought him in for a top thirty visit. You're talking Logan Lee then? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Let's. All right. So I think maybe a wide receiver here. I mean, it's pretty much the fourth round. Brandon Rice. I know it's early, but I could see him going late day day two. Bloodlines, I know they didn't show a lot of interest in them, but they've also scouted the West Coast a lot more than they usually would. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, also, Javon Bullard going to the Ravens, that's just mean. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I, I was looking at that. I was like, you gotta be fucking kidding me. And, of course, Will Shipley would go to the Chiefs. He's like, that makes so much sense. Yeah. <laughs> uh, how does the linebacking room look? Okay. Um, James Williams? Mm -hmm. The guy I was looking for is not there. I was hoping Trevin Walker. Or not Trevin Wallace, excuse me. What yeah. last said. Yeah, yeah. Kentucky guy. Yeah. Um, D tackle, because since Nathan Smith is gone. Uh McKinley Jackson, Makai Wingo. Nah, nah, nah. Not feeling those guys either. Mm -hmm. Nah, not this. I think stage. it I think wide I think it'd have to be wide receiver. Maybe, uh maybe. yeah, clearly. But I mean They could go back to back wide receivers here. I mean, they did it two drafts two drafts ago. They took, you know, our boy Pickens in round two, and then they took Austin in round three. Um, well, round four. Round four, yeah. Round four, round four, round four. Um, yeah, because they took, uh, who was it, Liao? Oh, God. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's not looking good. Yeah. Thank you, Colbert. Thank you. Maybe we trade him for, for a fifth round pick. I would love that. Is he worth it? Yeah. You think? Yeah, the right system. Yeah, they'll get the, yeah, they'll maybe, get the fifth out of him. I could see it. Yeah. Maybe we trade this pick away. For Brandon Ayuk. <laughs> Jesus. Um, I think maybe trade. try to trade this. I don't know who to. Good God. Pick anybody. Uh, um, I think if you trade this away, maybe to middle of the fourth, try to get like a fourth and a fifth here. Um, it's pretty much the fourth round. Let's see point. here. Um, who, who's, who's got a good amount of capital at the start of day three? Well, let me see. The, the Cardinals. Cardinals, maybe the Titans. What about the Jets? The Jets. They have, Would the Jets have one, one, one. They have one thirty four. Hey, actually, you know what? Yeah, I don't like that. Yeah. All right, Jets, Jets, J E T S. Go yeah, fuck. suck, suck, suck. Go fuck yourself. Um, is that good enough? Oh, it was ejected. No. Ah, you. Okay. Um, maybe the Bills. They're greedy. They're greedy. They got a Rod. They got Mike Williams. They got. Uh, did they? Did they trade for Hassan Reddick? I think they did. I think they did. Yeah, I don't remember. No, nah, but hold on. If we're going to trade from 98, I want to be able to get a pick before 119. Okay. Uh, yeah, it makes sense. It makes sense. Yeah, the Jags. The Jags is a good partner. They got enough yeah. capital. 98 for 114 and 153. Yeah. Fuck you. All right. Yeah, it's not working. It's not working. Swear drop, by What's the way. What's going to work here? What's right. going to work? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull some really unrealistic garbage just to make this uh, possible. <laughs> okay, listen, I'm not we saying we should, but it just it just has to happen. There we go. We all do it. We all do it. <laughs> um, oh, now we got another trade. 126 to 169. Nice. Um, do, do you want to execute this trade? Do you want to stay at 114? Because we were looking at a similar draft board here 
at receiver. No one has moved. Not really much has moved outside of Jamari Thrash, who is a very, very good uh, route runner. Mm-hmm. But he's off the board now. Blake Fisher's off the board. Yeah, I'll trade it. Who else is it? It's just, just the Packers. Yeah, just the Packers. You want to trade it? Yeah, they can they can take it. Oh, I don't remember. Did we take tackle? Yeah, we did. Fuaga. Yeah, Duh. Fuaga, of okay. course. I just need a quick recap. All right, let's trade this away. Wheeling and, and dealing. All right, well, okay. we're at 119 now. Now, now I'm like, do you want Luke McCaffrey or do you want Taj Washington? McCaffrey. Washington to me is more of your slot guy because he's small and quick. Whereas Luke McCaffrey is like a good number two wide receiver three. Right. Um, where are my how can I check the picks? Let's just propose a trade for anybody. We have picks 119, 126, 153, 169, 178, and 195. That's a lot. That's a lot. So we can save off McCaffrey for later. I'm we thinking could. Could. I'm thinking Washington or Rice here. Go with Brendan Rice. Why not? And the bloodlines, man. And, again, they have scouted the West Coast prominently this year, which they never do. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, let's yeah, go. go uh, Rice. We could always grab a second wide receiver later on. Yeah, and he's a big, tall weapon who can play outside. He, he's still mm-hmm. functioning as a route runner himself. So, let's go Brendan Rice. Uh, no, thank you. With the Broncos? Yeah, 136 or 203 for one Bro, they, they need to keep the capital. Why are they train shit away? I don't know. Swear jar, I know. <laughs> mm. Um, mm. Let's see who's still on the board. Wingo, Malik Washington, but I think we're saving for Luke McCaffrey. So maybe Gunkovich? Mm. We didn't go tackle yet. There's not a lot of great tackles here. I know Travis Glover is someone they've really scouted. Prominently from a small school. What is um what go to defense again? What does the cornerback room look like? So I still think they could double dip in corner. Daquan Hardy, easy peasy. Yeah. He yeah, that's a good one. Elijah Jones looks good there as well. MJ Devonshire is more of a later round guy. Those yeah. are like round five guys. Right. Um, Daquan yeah. Hardy, man, because the Steelers don't have a special teams ace at cornerback. They lost Pierre. They don't have that special teams guy, and Hardy it fits that to a T. While while potentially playing a slot position. Yeah, I think maybe a cornerback here would be good too, just because again, Trice and they have Rush, but you know, no one really sticks out. So who are you That's thinking? Kind of a, uh, cause we're we're still in the one twenties. Go to all. Mm-hmm. We don't need another mm-hmm. tight end. We already have four. Yeah, we're loaded at tight end. Tight end's fine. Not a lot of value here. Mm-hmm. Now, at this point, it's just uh, extra bodies in depth. We can go tackle. We're going to call it. We can go. Maybe we can double tackle. Because, again, outside of Roger Jones, all we have is Dan Moore. And think so about. So if you bring in Fawaga. And Jones, and then Dan Moore. You could maybe get rid of Dan Moore altogether and just cut his ass and keep. You know what I mean? Well, could do that. Well, think about this. Dan Moore's in the last year of his contract, and I don't think any of us want to see him remain. So we're going to need a new a swing guy. Yeah. Now so we maybe go, go uh, the local boy from Pitt. Yeah, I mean, we could go him, or we could save for a Travis Glover later, because I mean, the Steelers have eyes on him. That's uh, true. Because we can go another position. But, I mean, it's either tackle, corner, or receiver. Mm. What's the chat saying? They're saying defensive line. Go defensive line. Makai Wingo, Tyler Davis, Jordan Jefferson, Gabe Hall, who's later, Christian Boyd, who's later, Logan Lee, who's later. They they did take a look at Jordan Jefferson. I forget when it was at the – Combine, I think, informally. And and Carl Jordan Dunbar was at his pro day. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And Jefferson's the strongest of the bunch. Yeah. Wingo, I would say, is the weakest of the bunch. Mm-hmm. So do you want to go Jefferson here? Go Jordan Jefferson. I think okay. that would be a... Again, we're, we just need a depth guy. He's not going to be like the next coming of Cam Hayward. But. Right. Now, like they thought Loudermilk was. All righty. Now we're at pick right. 153. All right, now we can look at that 
wide receiver position again or even a cornerback would well, be great. We're just going to select Luke McCaffrey. Yep, good. <laughs> yeah, he's right <laughs> there. You. Right there. All right, now, um, we didn't take corner yet uh, outside of Sam Sam still. still. Here we could go. Let me see. Let's see who's there at all. Is Hardy there? Hardy was just he's... taken by the Vikings. What about uh, MJ Devonshire? That Devonshire is... Where the hell did he go? I think he's gone. I don't see him. You're lying. Oh, he was taken by the Broncos at 147. That's... Wow. Interesting. Um, so, cornerback... Mm. Mm -mm, no mm. one really there anymore. Nope. Safety, though, I mean, Tyke Smith is interesting because he's kind of like a – he's like a safety, but he's also could be a, a slot guy. Yep. He's interesting. He's a joker and, role. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a big fan he, of Tyke Smith. I mean, what about linebacker, too? This would be another area to maybe upgrade it. Nothing crazy. I mean, the no, Notre Dame guy no, they've looked at. No. Nothing crazy. I was kind of hoping maybe a Cedric Gray would drop this far, but – no, yeah. no, no, he's going. Uh, let's yeah, no. see. We we just went D tackle offense. We just went receiver. Let's entertain tackle again. Or guard. Or guard, yeah. They did look at the kid from Utah right there. Yep. Fitoma, that one. Yep. Six four three nineteen. Because, again, Nate Herbig hasn't exactly been, like, the most amazing prospect they brought in. I could see Maybe this also being competition for, like, a Spencer Anderson. Yes. Yeah. So you I wanna... can see that. Okay. I can see. So you want to go guard here? I would say guard or safety. It's, uh, it's safety, but it's not really safety. Tyke Smith would be a cornerback. Yeah, he's a slot. It, he's a slot corner. He would be converted to slot corner. Right. Unless we run a lot of dime, we could use him and Samus Toe in the in the in the in the slot. Right. That'd be dirty. Also, that would be dirty. funny enough, and you know it's a shame because we already got our our running back room. But I really like Isaac Garendo a lot. Yes, from Louisville. Louisville and running back with him. He was the only running back yes. that was formerly at the combine. They didn't bring him in for a pre draft visit, and they have three running backs plus Connor Hayward. So it's really four running backs on the team already. Mm -hmm. uh, Isaac Grendo is like a faster, better version of, of uh, James Conner. That's who he reminds me Yeah, I, I see James Conner and some Jalen Warren in his game. He's a he's a smaller Warren uh, or maybe a bigger Warren, but mm -hmm. uh, he's bigger and faster. But, yeah, I, I definitely I see think, a lot of Conner in him. The guy's a stud. I think Tyke Smith would be my pick here. I think the sa the secondary room just needs a little bit more physicality. Yeah, yeah just, just, just buff it up, load it up, absolutely. And right here we have one seventy eight. These are I believe I believe these are the last two picks of uh, of of the mock here. Yep, last two picks. Okay. What's Logan? Is Logan Lee still there? <laughs> uh yes, he is. As a matter of fact, so is Christian Boyd. They've looked at both of them. I really like Logan Lee, and I mean again. There are two positions in that in that uh, D tackle room that could be upgraded in Isaiah Loudermilk and Demarvin Leal. Yep, absolutely. Uh, and these extra picks—that's exactly what we need—is just camp bodies and competition and practice squad pieces, developments uh, really. Yeah, I like Logan Lee more, more Logan Lee more than Christian Boyd, and he also met with Dunbar. That to me has like a notch above just. Yeah. And he came in for a free job visit, just like Christian Boyd did, but. But Boyd, yeah. they did not go to Boyd's pro day, and not. Boyd, Boyd, uh, Boyd hasn't had a lot to showcase his potential because he was he was a combine snub. No one went to his pro day in regards to the Steelers, and of course the Steelers mm. are going to keep their ties on on Iowa because there's Cooper Dejan and there's Logan Lee there. So, mm -hmm. yeah, let's go uh, Logan Lee here. Yeah. All right, one ninety-five. Um, I'm thinking one. thinking Travis Glover. Mm-hmm. Travis Glover. I, I just feel like he, he's got a strong fit to be a stealer later. So Travis Glover mm -hmm. to double dip at tackle, but also to ensure that we have a future versatile mm -hmm. swing piece. Mm -hmm. All righty. All right. Let's see what the, uh, let's see the haul that we had. That was a lot of trades. All righty. So we got Fulaga at 20. We have Cedric Van Pan Granger at 51. Fixing the line immediately with two studs. Then Mike Sanders toe at 84. We wait till round four for a receiver, but we get a stud in Rice while also selecting Luke McCaffrey, uh, the next 
Zeke pick after Jordan Jefferson. Talk about bloodlines at wide receiver. Yeah. No. <laughs> 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 then Tyke Smith, who's a stud, Logan Lee, and then Travis Glover. So we double dip it tackle. We get our center. We double dip at slot corner. We double dip at receiver, and we double dip at defensive line. So we fulfill a lot of the depth in that aspect. Yeah, and and the other thing too that you know people need to realize is these are this is just like good fun, you know. Just you know, could be this guy, could be another guy. Um, we won't really know what happens until the draft, but until then, we can play around and do as many of these as we want. Yeah, absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. If there's one thing I could have changed about this, is definitely a linebacker because we need linebacker depth. Mm -hmm. um, but the way that the board fell. You know, there just wasn't any stud linebackers there. No, I would have hoped to maybe have found like a Trevin Wallace late in the third, but he's so good that he might not even make out of round two. Yeah, I agree. I wouldn't be surprised. No, I, I absolutely mm -hmm. agree. Um, but yeah, but I'm Matt's... happy with this. This, this, this. Would, I would be happy with this. I would be happy with this draft. Yeah, I mean, I know receivers going later, but. I will say this. We are the Pittsburgh Steelers, and receiver is way, way stacked. It's, mm -hmm. I would say, the most stacked class I'd ever seen. So mm -hmm, waiting mm -hmm. for a receiver, I understand that we, we discussed it's probably the, the arguably the biggest need on the team, but they can literally wait for 4-1. For I, I doubt they wait to the fourth, but it's, this is just the way that the cards fell. So yeah. that's what we, that that's the hand we were dealt with, and I think we did the best we could. I, I really enjoyed. I think this we spot. did a damn good job. Hire us, Pittsburgh Steelers. Hire us. <laughs> yeah, get us in the front office. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's the mock right there. So one more look at yeah. it. I'm happy with it, man. I'm happy with it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I would I would have to find our our last mock to compare. In fact, you know what? Let me uh. Here, let I me, think I can do that quick. Yeah. Find that mock and let's compare. Give me one moment. If my laptop wants to load for me, please. I have too many tabs open here. I'm one out. little bit of uh, one little bit of trivia while you look up that um, that information. Our last mock. It's interesting to note that if we look at the limited amount of time we had with Omar Khan and the draft he had last year, the first four four picks. One, two, two, three. Yeah, the first four picks. In the draft last year for the Steelers, every single one of those players came in for a pre-draft visit. Yes. Every single one. So interesting to think that maybe in the first three rounds this year, which again, four picks, but instead of having two in the second, you got two in the third. Maybe, just maybe, those will be four guys from the pre-draft visit again. Yeah. I mean, they, they, they view that as a, as a serious uh, notion to, to, to have, to, to make that a priority to get mm -hmm. these guys in and understand them and understand their fit before selecting them. It's just it's it's one way that they were able to succeed last year in the draft and why some of our rookies, I would say most of our rookies was the biggest highlights of the season. So yeah. mm -hmm, big time. Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna view that as a serious check mark on all these guys they're gonna bring in. And they're not done with mm -hmm. top thirty visits. So I would still anticipate yeah. some pretty big names to come in at receiver, at tackle, and yeah. especially at center. I think they got about four or five more spots to fill. I think after today, the news that you broke about, um, I forget what tackle you said they brought in today. Tyler Guyton. Guyton. I think they're down to like four people now. Is it? Um, yeah, I think you're right. Uh, or, yeah, yeah, I think they've, they've seen more people than that, but I think without the local visits in there, it's about at like 26 now. Right. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Twenty six. So yep. they got four more to do within two weeks. Yeah. You know, be so hopefully, hopefully we see. Um, like, if I were to, you know, take a guess on any of these guys, I wouldn't be surprised if like Keon Coleman or Brian Thomas is there, Graham Barton, maybe another cornerback somewhere, and like Mike Sandra still would be someone I'd want to see coming. Absolutely, mm -hmm. um, that would be that would be good. In fact, in fact that that segues perfectly. Um, is who is at the top of your wish list? We'll start with you, and then we'll move over to us. Who is at the top of your wish list? And it doesn't matter what round or what position. Who's at the top of your wish list? And, Chad, you guys can get involved as well. Honestly, Malachi Corley. I <laughs> yes. love the kid. Like, per the perfect two-round scenario for me would be the best offensive lineman on the board at the time, whether that's tackle or center. Hopefully it's a center. Um, and then round two, if somehow, some way, Corley can make it there. I just think in a run-based system, 
you can use him both as a wide receiver and as like that trick guy that's going to do a lot of running. Um, and if Pickens is our combat tall vertical catcher, Corley is the exact opposite. He's your yak guy. Yep. Call him the yak king for a reason. And a lot of people are going to compare him to Debo Samuel, rightfully so. They're built very similarly. They're, they're borderline running back-esque people. Um, but he just plays with just like a fury and a tenacity. Good buddy of ours, uh, Steel Jedi, actually compares Malachi Corley to um, Jarvis Landry. And I see that a lot. Uh-huh, I could He's see that. Very okay. gritty, slot guy, aggressive. Um, but he has that kind of Debo Samuel swagger to him. Yeah, I, I actually build. like that comp. I can, I, I see that now. Now that you mention it, shout out to Jedi. That's a hell of a good uh, comp time, right yeah. there. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, but that's that's top of my wish list. My like my top two people. I'm like, please, universe, give us these players. Will be Malachi Corley, and if somehow, some way, I know they're not going to, but I'm, I'm just <laughs> obsessed with the player. Tyler Newvin could get on the Steelers. I'd be all over mm-hmm. that. Oh, absolutely. But he won't. But, he won't, but, I, but I love him. But, yeah, uh, Malachi Corley is, like, number one for me. Yeah. Um, at the top of my uh, – and I'm going to start off with being incredibly unrealistic. It's Talisi Fuaga. Mm. Is it unrealistic? That's a great though? one. Is, is anything unrealistic with Omar Khan, though? Let's be real. I don't mm-hmm. know, man. He's, he's a top ten tackle. Oh, top ten talent, without a doubt. Yeah. Um, mm. But, yeah, I'll start with that if I'm being unrealistic. But – Realistically, uh, who I really want is still Jackson Powers Johnson. I think he's the best center in the draft class. I'm not saying we have to draft him in the first. We've mocked him, I think, three times now in the first. That will not happen in the future mocks, just a disclaimer. But uh, he's still at the top of my wish list. Um, a close second would be a Zach Frazier, and then obviously Van Pran right behind him for center. Um, if I'm talking wide receiver, <sighs> There's so many, man. There's so many, but I would have to say Leggett. I think Leggett, I know he had one year of production. He's older, which is just a little nitpick on my part, but I would say Leggett gives me A.J. Brown vibes with D.K. Speed. Um, I think he'd be a stud. I know he's he's kind of like Pickens where he's going to go up there and grab it and he's going to bully you uh, at the line of scrimmage. Um, he's going to bull you in the run blocking, but I just, I think Leggett is a, uh, uh, it fits like a perfect stealer. I remember going back to when AJ Brown was coming into the league and we thought maybe they would draft him as a receiver. He went round one to the Titans, but, mm. uh, or was it round two? Something like that. Round one. Went round one? Okay. I figured, but, um, I thought he was a, a, a perfect stealer then and I get the same vibes with Leggett there. So I would say Leggett, um, in terms of cornerback or slot corner, yeah, I would go San Till. Another close one is a Max Melton. I think he's a phenomenal fit with in and out versatility. I'll even throw Jerry and Jones and Renato Green out there. Those two were locked down the last two years. I know I'm throwing a plethora of names out there, but it's just this guy's at the top of my wish list. Rob, what about you? Well, you know, just, just same with you. There's just a lot of guys. There's just so many. The top three centers, of course, you know, as long as they draft a center real early within the first two rounds. I'm fine with that. The wide receiver class is loaded. A.D. Mitchell, Brian Thomas would be a nice one. Mm-hmm. Although they haven't visited them yet, there's still a possibility they got four guys left to visit with. Leggett, Pearsall, uh, Corley, you know, guys like that. The cornerback group, you know, especially early on, it's loaded. That's a big dark horse with Arnold. Um, McKinnistry, Wiggins, maybe Mitchell, because I know they've shown a ton of interest with Mitchell, you yeah. know. During the early stages of the Senior Bowl, but so they have a lot of. But there's no top thirty visit for him yet. Not yet, but again, there's four. You know, they they're gonna have mm-hmm. to pick and choose. You know, they're really gonna have yeah, to pick very closely. Um, there's a. Um, I I'll go back and I'll say I think more than I like Corley, even bigger on top of that is Ad Mitchell. Yeah. Like, yes, center is important. Yes, offensive tackle is important, but. If if we could walk away with like A.D. Mitchell and Cedric Van Pran in round two, oh man, I am happy as hell. Oh man, I mean, yeah, A.D. I know he gets Pickens comparisons, but why wouldn't we want another George you Pickens? <laughs> I see, I see why he gets Pickens comparisons. I would say current NFL player he reminds me of that is actually C.D. Lamb. He gives me a lot of C.D. Lamb. Dirty. Vibes. And um. 
old comparison, he reminds me a lot of Martavis Bryant. A mm-hmm. lot of Martavis Bryant. Skinny, tall, fast, big hands, you know. Um, yeah, that that's my that's my number one guy. If there's like one guy I'm like selfishly hoping we get, even though most of Steelers Nation would go up in arms and want to start a war, um, it would be it would be A. D. Mitchell. And he and George Pickens both went to Georgia. Yep. I'm just saying chemistry is Steelers there. Steelers have scouted Georgia the last now going on three years. Um mm-hmm. and clearly, like you said, they were teammates. He transferred to Texas, had an incredible year, eleven touchdowns. Uh, he, he's going to be a stud. He's going to be a, a, a definite first rounder. Could be the Steelers. Um, I'm not going to say anything further than that, but, you know, I yeah, do like. And, and, you know, there are two teams, both in the AFC, that really, really could use a guy like that in the Ravens and the Bills. I'm just saying you could screw them both over. Exactly. Why wouldn't the Steelers want to do that? Why wouldn't the Steelers want to do that? As a matter of fact, they, they, yeah. they would have to make it a priority. In fact, if we're looking yeah. at the draft order um, at 20, unless they trade back, but let's say they trade back with maybe. Like the, like the Packers, right? Like we were talking about. The the Cardinals is is possible because that's right in front of the Bills. You got – I'm looking at wide receiver needy teams. Um, Dolphins are clean. Eagles are clean. Vikings are clean. Dallas is clean. Packers is clean. Bucks got their guys back. Cardinals are going to draft a receiver at four. That's that, that's guaranteed. Bills, they, they're gonna, they lost everything. They, they have nothing. Lions are good. Ravens need a receiver. They lost Odell. Um, Niners are good. Chiefs. Chiefs, are, Chiefs, absolutely. But Chiefs. Three AFC teams, you could screw over. Yeah, and you got to beat them at the 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 passing attack. You just have to. And getting two phenomenal receivers. I mean, d- again, don't rule anything out. They could yeah. they could wait. They could still get a stud day two if they wanted to. But mm-hmm. I mean, you know, that's for any position. Let's be honest. Yeah. That's for any position that that's a need for the Steelers: center, tackle, corner. So and and remember this too, and then this will be the last thing I say. Um, we were really really big on a guy whose name was John Michael Schmitz last year, who everybody thought he was gonna be that late round first guy, and he didn't go to like round two or three, I think. Like yeah, he and Joe Tipman and all those like really high touted centers that come out every year, they didn't go till very very late. Um. I think a similar thing could happen here that we just view them as we're looking at it right now being like, we need a center because we don't have one. And that's why we're like, we need a center round one. But, you know, I don't think the Steelers look at JPJ, Frazier, or SVP that differently. It's like 1A, 1B, 1C. Exactly. They're going to be happy with any one of those. Um, I think Barton is above all of those three centers just because of his versatility, or at least that's what the reports are saying. It could be a giant smoke screen, um, but that's just my my uh, my push for wide, my selfish push for wide receiver. No, I totally uh, I totally agree there. Um, in fact, I'm warming up to the idea just just talking about it. To be real with just you, just think about it: Pickens, Mitchell, Najee, Warren. Like it'd be it'd be. Angry, angry team. With that quarterback room, dirty, 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 man. That's the offense we've been dreaming of, man. Um, mm-hmm. I will say this one more thing before I think we close this out. Um, I, this isn't breaking news. This is just some random report that was just thrown out there by ESPN's Matt Miller. I don't know if you heard about this, but I'll mm-hmm. tell the chat this as well. According to ESPN's Matt Miller, he says that a Steelers team scout told him, and I quote, I can't tell you the player, but I can tell you it'll be offensive linemen regarding the Steelers' number 20th overall pick. I can see that. I can, I can tell. definitely see that. Tackle or center for sure. Yeah. I, I'm saying wide receiver because I'm a fan, and I, I'm thinking like a fan would. You want all the splashy, talented guys. But, I mean, if I'm an organization, I would be picking a, a center or a tackle. And I think – I could even think that maybe tackle is the biggest smoke screen of them all. Like they're saying tackle to throw people the fuck off. Yeah. But it could very well be a center. Right. Yeah. It, it, like I said, it could it could be of Jackson Powers Johnson the entire time. Yeah. And they just they've been shutting up about him. Yeah, like like you mentioned previously with the Malik uh, Willis talk years ago. We all thought, oh Malik Willis, they're gonna trade up. Oh they're 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 at pick mm-hmm. what was it, pick twenty? Yeah. And then yeah. Malik Willis is there. No one, no one's mind crossed Kenny Pickett. A little Pickett. misdirection. Yeah, a little misdirection. It's like tackle, 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 
center. Exactly. Like it's sneaky. <laughs> it's like the whole time it was right there and might have been your initial thought and then things roamed mm -hmm. around and kind of flushed over those original thoughts and the whole time it was what you originally thought yeah. it could be. So it could be that. Um, just so, yeah, be so get out your heart medication, and, <laughs> you know, have a stress ball. Practice your breathing because it's going to be a wild ride. Yes, it is. And it's only two weeks away, man. It's only two weeks away before we find out who not only the next still is going to be, the next core of Steelers are going to be. And the only thing that we got to say here is keep your, keep your mind open. We are hell-bent online still, but they could go any, any direction. Yeah. And you, and you can't hate it. At all whatsoever. Because no, previous years, I remember, and Sentinel can agree with this, we were we were just locked in on one specific guy. Like when we drafted Najee, we didn't look at anyone else. No one further than Najee. The this... year we drafted Chase Claypool, all I cared about was J.K. Dobbins. Yeah, I was like, same. J.K. Dobbins yep. till I die. Yep. Yeah, exactly. I was I was in the same boat as you. But this year, I'm not hell bent on one specific guy anymore because. Nah. We got so many other guys. needs. It's stacked in, in several areas. Keep your minds open. So we'll see what and happens. Khan, Khan had a beautiful draft last year, so that, that, that could happen again. Yeah, it very well could. We have all the, all the comments that it will because the scouts have been doing their jobs. The scouts have been everywhere. Even our new coaches, our new quarterback coach, our new wide receiver coach, they have been everywhere. Our assistant O-line coach has been everywhere. Like mm -hmm. They're sending all these guys out. Khan and company, Tomlin and all them, they're not going to as many pro days as they might have last year, but they're really trusting their their scouts, their team, mm -hmm. and their their draft room. So you got to mm -hmm. trust what they've been doing because what they've been doing the last two years, it may not have resulted on the football field yet, but you got to like the, the, the direction the Steelers are going. Of course. So come to draft. And with the 20th pick in the NFL draft, the Steelers select Bo Nick. <laughs> No. If that were, dude, if that happens, I'm breaking the TV. Michael Penix, wa quarterback, what? Washington. Oh my God. <laughs> Tory Taylor, punter, Iowa. Like, <laughs> oh my God. Oh no. God. Uh, no, but seriously, I mean, keep your minds open to anything. That's all we gotta say about the draft. Yeah. Otherwise, Semo, it's always great to have you on. Always good to split opinions and get your draft analyst and your draft talk. And, and the Steelers, everything, everything regarding today was a blast, a joy. Always is. Good mm -hmm. to have you on again, man. Likewise, always a pleasure. Can't wait for the next one. Um, and until then, get out your popcorn. Hold on to your butts. It's about to get crazy. Ladies and gentlemen, two weeks away. Yes, two sir. weeks away. It'll be here before we know it. In fact, don't even think about it because it'll be here in the blink of an eye. That's all I'm going to mm -hmm. keep doing. So, otherwise, Sentinel, again, thanks for coming on. Always a blast. Can't wait to have you on again. And uh, still as nation. Let's just get prepared for the next two weeks of craziness. Don't believe all the reports you'll hear. But we'll see. We'll see what comes about. We'll see what reports yeah, are going to be out there. It's all going to be rumors come come draft day. Yeah. Then everything will be official. Right. So we'll see what will be official. Until then, man. We'll see you guys next time. Thanks for joining us tonight or t this afternoon, actually, on this uh, episode 64 of the Steeler Culture Podcast. Appreciate you guys for joining us this afternoon. With Sunil joining us. Huge shout out to him again. And see you in the next one. Here we go, Steelers. And as always, like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you later. Peace.